and welcome to the Happiness Festival, hosted by the Happiness Institute in association with Gowing Life. Today we are here with Paolo Pio. Paolo is the Managing Director for Europe at Joyance Partners, an early stage venture capital firm investing in delightful moments startups. Companies that create moments of delight for their customers, making them happier, healthier, or both. Before Joyance, he ran Cisco's data center networking business development team for Europe the Middle East, Africa, Russia, and Asia Pacific. Paolo, it is a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much, Rejo. The pleasure is all mine. All right. Well, um, should we start with your presentation and, and then afterwards we'll have a couple of questions for you? By all means, yes. I am super excited to be here with you and, uh, and to be able to speak to your amazing public. Uh, I know that we have tons in common, so here you go. Yeah, I thought that uh, it would be helpful uh, to go through the way investors think about health and happiness as a, a investment class, investment theme, number one. And then number two, how health and happiness change across people across the globe, right? What are they to each different uh, country and populations? So that's a little bit what we'll be discussing over the next uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, by bio background, as you mentioned, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Paolo Pio and I run Joyance Europe. Uh, Joyance is a venture capital firm investing in um, health and happiness uh, startups, as you uh, mentioned. My personal background is um, um, I'm obviously Italian, as my name and accent clearly tell. I studied in Italy, uh, engineering. I then left, went to California, worked at Cisco for many years as a software engineer first, product management later, moved back to Europe, lived in Switzerland, um, run the business development team for Europe, Middle East, Africa, Russia, and then later took on Asia and Australia. Uh, and then uh, in the meantime, I did my MBA at London Business School, and you can see all the different brands, uh, which eventually led me to make angel investments. Uh, which one of which introduced me to Joyance. I joined uh, at the beginning of last year and it's been an incredible, incredible journey, um, uh, which I can't wait to tell you guys more about. Also, I think it's important to say that on the side, uh, my passion is for fitness, nutrition, and meditation. These are three things that I've been researching over the past, I would say, eight years. Uh, I run a boot camp called Urban Tribe in London. I found it, but that together with a couple of friends uh, uh, four years ago and is now a community of more than a thousand people. And you can see a representative picture of last summer when there was no social distancing uh, at one of those boot camps. Um, so this is very conducive to my day job of investing in uh, health and happiness and delightful moments. Um, I think we will get right into it, who we are at Joyance. Um, so, we're the first venture fund that focuses on the emerging science of individuals' health and the delivery of happiness, right? So we look at it from a deep science perspective, and that's also why we really like uh, uh, what you guys are doing with the Happiness Festival uh, and your initiatives from Oxford, uh, because deep science is something that is extremely important for us. And our mission is actually to uh, partner with the best entrepreneurs worldwide at the very beginning and support them in building uh, uh, legendary companies and eventually make the world a healthier and happier place. You can see some numbers about ourselves. So we invest in more than 300 companies worldwide since 2009. We have three unicorns in our portfolio. A lots of these companies, uh, well, all of these companies, we invest, in, we invest in seed stage. So very, very early, moment of inception. And um, we've done uh, very well, so much so that the fund started in the United States and is now expanding to Europe with our team uh, and, uh, and focusing globally, actually. Sorry, one more thing to say I think it's relevant is that uh, a lot of our portfolio companies have actually seen uh, uh, up round during COVID. So investing in health is, you know, shown to be super resilient to these crises and some of them actually benefiting, right, a, a large part. Some impacted, but uh, um, it's, it's definitely a very 
has unleashed, unlocked, I would say, uh, in, in um, innovation that would have otherwise taken years to uh, get accepted. These are some of the portfolio companies uh, that, uh, in, specifically in Europe, as, as mentioned, we invested, we started investing in Europe last year, uh, and you can see who they are, why, what they do, why we, why we believe they are delightful, and where they are based, in which city. And these are 2020 portfolio companies. So this year, uh, we have now made seven investments, which make us very proud given the crisis. You know, the, six, the first six months of the year have been um, intense. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, we have been uh, happy to find the entrepreneurs of value that kept on going despite, uh, you know, the hardships. So, you know, what, 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 how do we think about investing in health and happiness, right? Um, well, first of all, it comes down to what makes, what delights people, you know, what are the things that make people happier, healthier? And um, it, it, we interpret these as moments of delight. And there are, you know, a hundred different moments of delight. Delight is different in each culture. Uh, you can see some pictures of uh, representative of moments of delight. The one that represents me the most would be the aper aperitivo, right? You can see it right here, people doing happy hour, uh, uh, which is a communal moment around drinks and food together with your friends right before dinner. Uh, but maybe for other people, it might resonate more uh, the one at the bottom, uh, you know, a walk in the nature with beautiful sceneries. And uh, this is what the Norwegian calls uh, fruit leaves. I'm butchering it, but basically it's about uh, engaging, being one with nature and um, uh, really being true to it and going, going back to our roots. Or the bottom left, which is the ceremonial uh, sado in Japan, right? It has a very specific uh, routine on uh, how to implement it and how to be delivered um, this uh, green tea uh, drinking. Or the bottom right, it's called Hige in um, uh, Danish, right? So being home in a safe environment with your family, you know, around the fire with something drink, with something nice, warm to drink, uh, it's, it's considered delightful for them, right? Uh, the British might recognize at the bottom right, the high tea and the moment that uh, 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 it's considered delightful where we live, right, in, in London. Or also the Shabbat at the bottom, at the top left. So these are all different examples of what different cultures consider delightful, right? But in reality, <clears throat> uh, these are expression of uh, common principles and values, right? So if you look at, around the world, what are the values that people consider the most important, you find a very common pattern. Majority puts family first, right? Um, uh, and then that is followed by work, friends, religion, leisure time. And you can see that the, in the middle, very, very small, it's politics. Nobody likes politics, basically. So it's interesting to see uh, uh, this common pattern of um, uh, values, right, that are important um, um, uh, for everybody uh, around the world and that, that manifest themselves in the different moments of the light. So really, how do you construct a moment of the light, right? There are some specific uh, building blocks that we have identified. We spent a lot of time thinking about this, right? Uh, about health and happiness and delightful moments. And so in terms of building blocks, it's about uh, activities, artifacts, space, and cultural context. Um, here you see the deconstruction of what's called Higi in Denmark. And again, please pardon my terrible pronunciation. Um, so you know, what is important in, in, in that specific delightful moments, you remember was the picture on, on the bottom right, you know, with two people around the fireplace with a warm drink and socks, right? So the activities, that is all around the sheltering and really dwelling. Uh, and if you look at artifacts, what enables that is uh, woolen socks, hot beverages, candlelight, create the atmosphere. Physical space is something that we also find being very, very important. Right, and in this specific case, it's about uh, 
being a safe space, right? Non-threatening uh, in, a, in, a, in a small room. And then obviously the cultural context came into, into, into uh, play. And in this case, it's about uh, non-competitiveness. Uh, politeness is a no-no uh, and, and being all the same. So, you know, this is the, sp- and you can basically deconstruct all the moments we saw earlier across these four dimensions, right? Uh, and these are all the things that are important. And then there are, this is basically the top-down view, right? This is the things you need to construct at moments of the life. And if you look at with a, sorry, I meant, yeah, bottom-up, and now if you look from a, a top-down approach is uh, what are the themes that are common? And you would find uh, these four kind of themes that run across, which are coziness, food, ritual, and celebration. And we saw it with the Sado or the Carnival of Brazil, and then finding purpose, right? So something that is more introspective, um, uh, similar to the being one with nature. So all these brings us to say, um, you know, okay, fine. Now we understand what constitutes the life. What are the things that are common across people and, uh, and how they manifest themselves, uh, you know, and, and, and more delightful moments means basically uh, moving your base towards a happier base, right? Uh, you know, how do you increase happiness? So there's ways uh, that you can do that. Some of these are in a way uh, uh, easy to understand and I'm, you, I'm sure the other speakers will go much deeper into it. So strong relationships, everybody intuitively knows it. You know, quality of sleep, it's obvious, right? I mean, but it's obvious, but it's forgotten. I think it's getting much more uh, 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 hype these days. Um, Physical, mental activity. But I want to, for example, make an example of meditation, right? Meditation and flow. So you can actually demonstrate, I mean, uh, that meditation increases your um, uh, prefrontal cortex activity and moves it uh, towards the left of your prefrontal cortex. And you can say that that is in a way a way to measure happiness, right? Um, uh, we, we're working on actually at a fun level to define what is happiness, right? How do we measure happiness, which is in our view, very important. Ha- with health, it's easier. With happiness, we, you know, there's a lot of work that we are actually doing in that sense. So meditation is a way to do so. Uh, and you can um, show through an fMRI this change in your brain waves, right? In your brain activity. And, and so in a way, uh, we believe that happiness also makes you, being happier makes you healthier, right? And also the other way around is true. And this is what, we call the virtuous circle of health and happiness, right? So if you can increase, if you know, and you can find ways to increase your happiness, right? You're also gonna be healthier. And if you're healthier, you're also happier. So this is something that intuitively we understand, but more and more science is actually proving it and backing this up with research. And I thought I would put some research in this page, right? You can see all the links uh, to studies that actually show you, for example, how happiness promotes a healthier uh, lifestyle, right? Uh, and people make better choices. Uh, happiness actually makes you sleep better. Um, you know, it boosts your immune system. It reduces stress. Uh, and again, all science back data about this, right? Uh, it reduces dementia and it increases lifespan. So these are Again, something that intuitively we understand, but it's very, very important that we substantiate this with deep science because deep science makes for a good defensible competitive advantage as a startup. So as an investor, that's, as investors, that's really where we want to play. We want to back those entrepreneurs that are solving hard, complex, difficult problems and um, that are innovating, creating something new and, and that deep science will give them defensibility uh, and a long-standing competitive advantage over others. So one word about, I guess, the size of the market, which is huge, we believe health and happiness is the uh, strongest uh, venture opportunity of the past uh, at least decade. Uh, you can see that uh, it's more, it's a, 
a play that goes across many different verticals from food and beverages to uh, microbiome, neurotech, uh, biotech, longevity and aging, uh, pet care, femtech, uh, sexual wellness, right, digital health, uh, all these together create a 15 trillion opportunity. So for an investor, it, this is an incredible place to be focusing on. The last bit is, um, uh, you know, our ambition, our vision in a way, we really want to build a community based on health and happiness. And this is some of the things that we started doing, right? Um, 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 we now have a digital platform that connects uh, our entrepreneurs. So more than a hundred CEOs across the globe are connected through it, right? Part of our network and they are helping each other out. And you can see some of them, right? Some of them are in London, such as Celine. Some others are spread out across uh, the US, Europe and Asia, right? And they can help each other out. They can collaborate. Uh, they can um, uh, actually also meet, right? We do in-person meetings. The last one we did before the lockdown was actually in London where 70 of our entrepreneurs flew sorry, 70 of our friends, among which 10 entrepreneurs at the time flew in from different parts of Europe. And it's amazing because magic things happen. For example, at that event, uh, you know, one um, uh, of our CEOs that is working in lab-grown fat got to meet with another of our CEOs that is actually working in uh, plant-based chicken. Uh, you know, and after talking, they left to grab a beer and um, decided to try do a trial of a hybrid product uh, that would be constituted, would be a chicken nugget made with plant-based chicken and lab-grown fat, which I think is fantastic. Um, so this is an idea of what can happen, right, by building this community in real life as well as digital. And that's why uh, we want to partner with you with the Happiness Festival, and I think it's a fantastic initiative uh, uh, to really um, uh, have these, you know, 10 years from now, be a global community, everybody that works in the space uh, of health and happiness, uh, please, you know, come and uh, reach out to us, come talk to us, and, um, and obviously, uh, together with you, uh, we really want to um, uh, improve the state of the world. I'm done, and the clock says 14 minutes, so... <laughs> right on time. Thank you, Paolo. That was excellent. I mean, undoubtedly, uh, I very much like the work that you're doing and, and Joyance is, is definitely uh, one of my favorite VCs. Um, and, um, you know, the investment thesis that you have as well, super interesting. And, and clearly the, the companies that you've invested in are really good as well. We do have a couple of questions for you. Yes. Um, so, um, first of all, so... Are you seeing any geographical trends in terms of uh, where happiness is more of a focus in life and in culture than others? So, um, I would say people interpret uh, happiness, give it a different meaning in, meaning in different places. And um, I don't know if I would say that it's more or less, but it's different, right? Um, you know, <clears throat> For example, uh, the, the, the Finnish have a word to describe this, uh, uh, this strength that they have from the inside that they can find when everybody already gave up and in hardship and they can dig in deep and um, yeah. from a visceral place really come out uh, and still find the strength to go, right? And that's what they, they characterize those that, that kind of the people, right? It's not the same for us Italians, right? We are more about, uh, yeah, enjoying life, enjoying family, take our time and, 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 and stay together. So it, it's, um, I don't know that one is more than the other, but it's diff definitely different ways to uh, approach, uh, approach it. And in my view, uh, it is important that uh, um, for us, as, as investors, we understand it and we nurture all these ways. That's why also, I said, just one last thing, diversity is very important in our team. You know, out of our, we are 21 globally. You know, we have different people from different nations. We have obviously, you know, age ranges that go from 20, 30, 40, 
50s, 60s. Uh, we have uh, Italian, Swedish, French. Uh, we have Indian, American, Japanese, uh, Colombian, you know, Chinese, actually. So uh, you really want to go at it from an angle of uh, diversity and, and, and being able to understand what ticks for different people. Yeah, that's really interesting, and I, I agree with you. Huga was uh, was an interesting word as well. Um, I thought that's uh, it's quite a nice um, uh, sentiment. Um, so, um, what was the genesis of the investment thesis in terms of ha- happiness? Because it makes a lot of sense, uh, but you seem to be pioneering this space, uh, and the results are excellent. But how did it all come about? Thank you. Well, it's interesting you say this. Uh, what happened is initially the funds were tracking the trends in uh, uh, mobile and social back in 2009 where we started. And um, we, in fact, one of the investments we made is Pinterest, right? Uh, which yeah. we last year. So, but then little by little started picking up signals in the direction of health and happiness. And this is because we heavily rely on uh, uh, automated system, right? So we have our own uh, tools, software tools that continuously um, uh, scrap the web, uh, social media, uh, you know, pick up signals from um, uh, different parts, you know, track universities and what PhDs that are reaching the end of their activity they might be doing and possibly go out and fund the startup, you know, for, because really we play at the moment of inception, so we want to be there super early. But basically we started seeing this, this tool started picking up tons of activities uh, uh, in the areas of health and happiness. And so our fund started basically moving to, towards focusing on that direction. Uh, and, and, and we realized that, uh, it's not just one or the other, you know. It's we didn't want to, we didn't believe in a, in, let's say, traditional health fund, right? Investing in biotech and yeah, let's say it, right, pharma. But rather, we the mar- the, the the time the market was ready for a new perspective on these that will look at health from the point of view of happiness, right? And we. That's where we started basically um, building the team in such sense in this direction. So we have, uh, you know, PhDs in life sciences that uh, help a part of the team to uh, diligence the startups we speak with, but also we have a medical doctor with us, right, um, uh, that can uh, uh, understand on the health side. We have CPG specialists, right, that can pick up the consumer sentiment you know, towards you know branding and digital products um and uh, and then we have a food and drink specialist right that, that uh, can read more the on one side uh, uh, the, the nutrition the nourishment but also the the, the pleasure and the taste in uh, in, in uh, high volume consumers consumer products so all these together uh, it's really what uh, started building our thesis back in 2015-16 right and 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 that's where we then started investing in both and eventually you know as 2018 19 come about uh, our focus is solely on health and happiness um, um, uh, and, and, and our team is built specifically for uh, that purpose right so yeah um, yeah thank you that's a really interesting composition and also uh, an excellent story as well it's got so many it's got so many good uh, uh, parts to it I think um, which seems to be a trend um, here with, with this talk. I, I like it a lot. So um, so a question for you. Um, if you had unlimited resources to fund one field of research into happiness, what would it be? Ooh, la, this is a very tricky question. I, what am I going <laughs> to I mean, there's many that I am very, very passionate about, as well as I believe that are extremely important and, uh, and, uh, and, and useful, right? Um, we personally are putting a lot of resources uh, uh, both into the understanding, quantifying, as I already mentioned, happiness. Uh, so, how, you, you know, how do you define it? How do you quantify it? Uh, how do you measure it? Uh, this has a lot to do with neuroscience. We have a neuroscientist uh, part of our team recently. And I, I believe that you do that and then that really uh, helps you with everything that is around it. 
everything that goes and contribute to happiness, you can now measure it. And you can actually measure if there is a real impact, right, rather than just fluff. So that's one thing that, uh, that, that we are passionate about, but definitely the other areas that are, uh, you know, we love would be longevity. Longevity has tons of these uh, different aspects, and I'm sure that many other speakers will go on it. It's a, it's a market that is, it's an area that is starting small, and I believe, you know, um, uh, only in recent years, people, I mean, some have been at it for a while, but it's become more mainstream only in recent years, and this is going to explode. Yes, population yeah. older, and, you know, as we bet more, we get more aware of, of what we can do down the road this technology enabling us to maintain our faculties in uh, later life our mobility and so on and so forth so longevity something that is in, super close and dear to my uh, to my heart and then the last one for me is also uh, uh, nutrition i mean i love i love understanding what i eat and um, uh, there is so much misinformation around that and um, Everybody has their own, uh, many, has their own ideas in a way, and you see conflicting info. So I would love for um, uh, more education to be done in this space, um, uh, and people be more aware because it has a huge impact on uh, our uh, health in general. And so, yeah, n- nutrition and food, next generation food. That's why we invested a lot also in plant-based meat, but we also invested in. Uh, uh, culture, culture, right? Uh, so lab-grown fish, lab-grown meat, uh, lab-grown mushrooms, even, and and uh, those are incredibly important, both from a health perspective of people, but also for our planet, right? And and and, and resources and sustainability. So, all in all, I guess I gave you three. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, no. It's good. Uh, the more, the merrier. Um, all of those uh, topics sound very exciting, indeed. Um, and um, and uh, longevity is is a is an excellent one as well. I think. Um, so okay. So what does happiness mean to you? Well, uh, if you ask me personally, I guess you know the most important things for me. What what I prioritize is. Uh, uh, Certainly, family being Italian is super important, and then um, uh, fulfillment in my uh, life and work. So it's super important for me to be able to do something I I, I truly enjoy and I find meaningful and that gives me pur- purpose. Right? I mean, if you look at my background, I was at Cisco for 13 years, and I changed a number of times within Cisco, and I was doing well. I was happy, but then I decided to really completely change and get into investments and into venture capital because uh, that's what I realized later that I was passionate. It was difficult to do, right? Because changing when you are, uh, you know, in your mid thirties is not is not something easy and. And it took a lot of work. It took years, uh, starting from 2014, and eventually realized on 2019. But basically, it's it's important. I didn't want to be stuck at, at a job that it was, you know, ah, uh, getting by for the rest of my life. Even though I liked it, there was a lot of good, but it was not. So work for me is important. Family is important. Uh, being mentally, physically, um, in at, at my top top shape <laughs> I, I i spend also a lot of time and resources on it so uh, um yeah those are the things uh, uh that i think uh, i'm friends i guess yeah what i what, what am i leaving out <laughs> but it, it, interesting you say that because you 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 answered uh two questions in one actually because one was actually about uh, you're in terms of going from um, the data center networking part to investing in happiness, and it is slightly different, right? Um, but you, but you mentioned uh, how that came about, and I understand your motivations completely. Um, and and so, have you got any tips or tricks to live a happier life? So, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, it's a uh, in my I'd say it's something that. Um, um, in my, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now 38. So I've been asking myself this question, this question at, since I turned 30, I believe. So, you know, uh, uh, Paolo now would tell you something different than what I would have told you 10 years ago. But uh, I'm sure that Paolo 10 years from now will know much more and can give you much better advice. For now, what, what does it for me is, uh, 
Um, and what I would recommend people to do is, uh, uh, first of all, at least for me, I need to take care of myself and, and physically and mentally be, uh, you know, at my best because that's the only way I can then help others, right? And yeah. if I want to support my family or or people around me or my friends or or my team and I want to you know inspire anybody I need I need to be at the top of my game to start with so that's why for me physical fitness and mental fitness are super important so I would recommend everybody to meditate and uh, and you know to eat as clean as they can and, uh, and, and, and to be and, and to stay fit, to stay healthy. So yeah, yeah that would be the, my, my, my best recommendation to start with. And then from there, sure, at that point, you, you know, you set yourself up to be now in the condition to um, uh, spend time with your families, spend time at work, spend time with your friends, um, do what you want but that's in my view the enabler right is first you need to manage yourself and, and set yourself up for being the best version of yourself yeah i think this is a very this is a topic that is very trendy you know lately people you know the younger generations i believe are picking that up much more than than when i was young so um yeah Thank you. No, that's interesting. And, and I uh, definitely agree with you as well. I think, um, you know, physical health uh, uh, and everything it, it, uh, and, you know, exercise, things like that play a massive role in feeling better as well and performing better as well, um, which is interesting because can you tell us more about Urban Tribe? I've seen it uh, and, and uh, I've seen it and, um, you know, almost went to it. Not yet, but uh, but I, I, I will. But how did that whole uh, how did that come about? We would love to have you, and I'm sure you would have a blast. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, when I moved to London back in 2014, 15, I started school. I didn't know anybody, and really fitness is what uh, helped me to meet people. And so by going through other boot camps, I started making friends, and people that were passionate about fitness like me. And then eventually we decided to uh, start our own, but it wasn't like a conscious decision. In the beginning, it was just like, all right, you know, we're training uh, at the gym indoor during the week. Let's go to the park, you know, Hyde Park during the weekend on Sunday. Yeah. And so we started doing that. And the first Sunday was the three of us, myself, an Australian friend and an Iranian friend. And then the Sunday after I brought some friends, they brought some other friends. And then the Sunday after again, and then again, and then again, and then eventually, all right, let's meet at 11. And so eventually it became a thing. And then uh, when we started having, I think, uh, 60 people show up, we decided, well, maybe it's time we give it a name. And, um, and we did so. So the bootcamp is free, starts uh, at 11, and uh, it goes for an hour and a half. We do basically three sessions of normally it's heat, so high-intensity interval training. And then the yeah. fourth session is uh, yoga and meditation. Uh, Tati is a Brazilian. Uh, she, she's trainer of ours she's amazing she's a young instructor and so after we butchered you know people's body by hard uh, you know uh, workouts uh, she kind of like uh, soothed their souls with uh, yoga so yeah it's fun nice one so everyone uh check out urban tribe as well uh i'm sure it's easy to sign up uh we'll see you there i will definitely be there um i, I think it will be really fun um I think on that note, uh, that concludes it all. Thank you so much, Paolo. That was really insightful. Um, great to hear about everything that's going on. Um, and um, I think Thank you. That, my, yeah. my, my pleasure, Rejo. I am very happy that we met. And I think that you guys are doing something fantastic with the Happiness Festival and the initiative that um, uh, you're doing on a volunteering basis. So, you know, uh, hats off to you and uh, to all the organizer team. I really hope that we can work together to be this incredible community. I think so. Thank you so much, Paolo, and we will see you very soon. All righty, thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, bye, bye, bye.